Bonsoir à tous. Good evening to everyone. Uh, <clears throat> in the time that I have, I would like to introduce you to some of the work that my laboratory has been doing, looking at the effect of sleep, aging on memory. And to do so, I'll be focusing on one particular form of memory called procedural, which correspond to our capacity to acquire different kinds of skills over time. And it refers to the process by which improving of uh, smoothness and accuracy of movements is being done through practice. These, see, uh, as these movements are very complex, it's very difficult to use these kind of movements to try to study uh, the brain and to use them in the scanner. And so in my laboratory, what we've been using mainly is much simpler tasks designed to look at more sequence learning. And in this paradigm, subjects will be taught the se a sequence of finger movements that they will know explicitly prior to practicing. And then for several blocks of practice and even several sessions, we'll ask them to repeat the same sequence of finger movements over and over again. When you do that, this is like actually when you try to play the piano. For example, the beginning is difficult because you have to think about the movement you have to produce, but then with practice it becomes more automatic. And this is the kind of learning that uh, I'll be looking, I'll be uh, talking about tonight. So as you can see, with this kind of task, you can see that the subjects, young normal control subjects, show very uh, large improvement in performance as measured by a reduction in time to produce the finger uh, movements. <clears throat> and uh, they reach us actually some asymptotic performance after 14 blocks of practice. And so in order to now understand not only the, the brain structures and the brain plasticity that occurs during this type of learning, uh, we then ask the subject to, to practice the sequence in a scanner while lying down in here, like in, in a scanner like that, and then <clears throat> we record the brain activity of that subject. And then when we, we do that, we then correlate the brain activity observed with the performance, the improvement in performance that can be seen here in subjects. And when you do that, these are the regions that we typically find related to motor learning. One is being the striatum, as you can see here, the, above the level of the, the brain, the cerebellum, and also motor related structures. We think that the functional interaction between those structures is critical to build the motor plan necessary to do the task at hand. However, after practice, we have shown that only the striatum with the related cortical, related cortical structures will be sufficient not only to learn but also to maintain this kind of ability over time. So then when you test a subject the next day on the same task, one thing you can observe is that the subjects are able to further learn the sequence of movement they're also showing maintenance of this ability over time, but also they're showing another phenomenon, which we call the consolidation process, where you can see that if you compare the performance at the end of the training compared to the beginning of the learning process, you can see that there is significant improvement in performance, what we call gains in performance. And we think that those gains in performance are due to the consolidation process that occur between the different sessions of training. And the consolidation process being defined as being the motor experience is thought to be dynamically reprocessed and transformed into an enduring state. So transferring the memory trace into long-term memory through that consolidation process. We also have a lot of evidence now a days showing that sleep will play a major role actually in facilitate this consolidation process. For example, one of the experiments that we did in our laboratory, we had two groups of subjects where we asked, first of all, as trained the subject uh, <clears throat> on the sequence task in the morning, 
and then we tested them in the evening 12 hours later and showed that after the simple passage of time as you can see there is no significant improvement in performance however when you train subjects in the evening and then we test them 14 or 12 hours later after a night of sleep then you can see that there is a significant improvement suggesting that sleep here helps the consolidation process and then when we look at the EEG <coughs> that we're recording during the night that which the EEG allows us to look at different stages of sleep and also some features of sleep what we found is that there was only one type of oscillation one type of feature of sleep that was significantly related to this improvement in performance and these were spindles what, what we call spindles that are basically events that occurs during sleep especially during stage 2 and 3 of sleep and are at the frequency of about 10 to 16 Hertz and in fact when we compare subjects on the control to a control task and we looked at subjects that were trained on the sequence you can see that there were an increase in the total number of sleep spindles as well as a greater duration of sleep spindles uh, after sequence learning and this was found in the three phases of the night and so <clears throat> if spindles are important one, one hypothesis that we, we had is that one of the reasons why perhaps spindles are important for the consolidation of motor skill is that they are involved in reactivation of the trays during the night and <clears throat> that reactivation that occurs on several occasions during the night is then perhaps producing a better consolidation process and then also better performance the next, the next morning. And so to test this hypothesis, we basically did another experiment where we trained the subject again in the scanner around 10.30 and then asked the subject to stay in the scanner and to sleep in the scanner for, for a period of about two hours and a half. And at the same time, we recorded EG. And then we tested the subject after they had slept in the laboratory, we retested the subject the next morning. This is what the EEG looks like in a uh, magnet, in an MR machine. Because as you can imagine, trying to record electrical activity in a magnetic field is perhaps not the best environment to do that. However, when we get rid of the noise that is produced by the magnet itself and also some physiological noise in subjects, we can then look at the EEG and identify electrical activity um, that is specific to spindle, for example, here, and then ask the question, what are the brain regions that are correlated with this occurrence of event during the night? And when you do that, what we found is that the, during the sleep and during the spindles, so time lock to the spindles, the brain regions that were activated were again the same regions that are found to be, for example, in the basal ganglia and mainly the uh, striatum that are involved in the reactivation of, of the traits. So what about the effect of aging now? Well, people in my age and older, there's a lot of evidence showing that we can learn uh, motor sequence and other skills as well. Uh, we may be slower to do the, to do the task and to, to learn, but as you can see, the learning curve is very similar to what we found in also in normal controls and young normal control subjects. If you retest the subject again the next day, you can see also that they show additional improvement in performance as young subjects. However, compared to the young, what we find is that where compared to the young that shows this improvement in performance after sleep, those older subjects are showing a deterioration of performance, suggesting here that sleep is not helping the consolidation process of this kind of scale in older subjects. And so although this is very conjectural, 
what we one of the two reason, two factors may be explaining this kind of uh, deficit that we observe in other subjects. One is a change in spinal activity with age, and this is work that's been done by uh, my colleague, Dr. Julie Carrier, and where she showed that compared to young subject, even in middle age, you can see that there is a reduction in spinal activity at the level of the uh, density, amplitude, and also duration. The other reasons why perhaps the older subjects have difficulty with consolidating motor sequences is that we, in, based on our own findings, we have shown that when we compare the brain of, of activation of the older and young subjects, what, <clears throat> what we find is that there is a reduction of activity in the epitamin, in the striatum, compared to what we find in uh, young subjects. So suggesting that Perhaps, as like mentioned, the reason why the older subject have difficulty is because of these two factors, one being neurophysical in nature and the one doing it, being, it, being involved at the <coughs> neural, uh, acti neural activity level. So, as a take-home message, uh, are that, first of all, sleep and spindles in particular play a critical role in motor memory consolidation. And older individuals are capable to learn new motor skills, but are less efficient in consolidating a motor scale. And so on this, I'd like to thank the uh, collaborators on this type of work and the students and postdoc who did the work and also the uh, agency who helped to pay for the work. Thank you so much. If you elaborate what you talk about young versus old, what are you talking about? <laughs> 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 no, in our in our groups, in the groups of subject that we we usually test, it's uh, the range is from 60 to about 75. That's what we mean by older. And then the young group are usually students at the university level that are between 20 and. 30 years old. Yes? As I understand it, let's say uh, eight hours of sleep, there's different phases, some of being REM and some of it being called deep sleep. So when does the spindle phase occur? <clears throat> mainly in a stage two of sleep. Stage two, the, where, this is where we find mainly the spindles, and then we also can find them and observe them in stage three as well. So it's basically in the non-REM sleep phase that we observe those activities. Stage two is physically in time, the second, the second part of the sleep phase. So there's four stages in the second. So the sleep after two hours, perhaps, is what I'm saying. Oh, no, no, it's not after two hours. Wait, okay. When you say phase, it's in a time, in time. Well, it's the sleep phase, right? It goes from stage one, two, three, four, and then go back to REM sleep, and then th that phase is about 90 minutes, right? And then it repeats over during the night, okay? And so, but in each phase, that we, the subject will spend a, quite a bit of time in stage two and three as well, and so that's what, this is when we find those, those events in particular. I was just wondering, if additional practice um, if the um, people in the 60 to 75 range had more frequent practice, would that have an impact um, on the Consolidation yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. If you give them more practice, then they will also catch up with the young young subjects. It's just that <clears throat> it will take it's more difficult for them to consolidate the the, uh, the skill. But obviously, they will. They may not be able to perform at the same level that young subjects, but they will they will catch up to to them. Yes. Thank you.